Good morning. Oh, just. <laughs> Welcome to Coon Rapids United Methodist Church. Okay. Pastor Diana is away today. She'll be back tomorrow. I'm Tammy Gallagher, and it's a joy to worship with you today. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, your presence is already here as we begin our worship service. We can feel your spirit at work within us, and your energy makes us feel alive. May we join together in unity as we praise and worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand as you're able for our opening songs.
Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, wonderful is your unfailing love. How glorious, how beautiful you are. You opened my eyes to wonders anew. You captured my heart with this love because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. I have a couple of announcements to share with you there on your pink insert. The first one is that Don Burns' funeral will be on Saturday, January 4th at 11 a.m. with a visitation at 10 a.m. The second one is that Nancy Mahowald is offering another Bible study. It starts next Sunday at 6 p.m. And then there's a Spirit of Matthew 25 meeting coming up. We've had a couple of them already. But if you haven't had a chance to go to one, I really suggest you try and get to this one. It's not just about the Matthew 25 food distribution. It's really about the Spirit of Matthew 25 and where our church is and where we might be going in the future. So that's January 13th, Monday, from 7 to 8 p.m. And then the last announcement I want to share with you is a wonderful opportunity to serve homeless families in Anoka County. We are hosting Family Promise at the Day Center in Ramsey on January 19th through the 26th. So we need people that will offer food, that will, um, so they'll, bring food in a crock pot to feed people, or they'll stay for two hours at night um, and just do homework or play with the kids, or we, ha need, we also have a need for people to stay overnight. So if any of those things are something you could do, that would be great. The, um, the families that are gonna be there, we have two families already and they're getting a third family now. So the, the need is there for our help. I also want to share with you our miracle report. We've had some holy moments here in this last week. One of them I want to share with you happened yesterday. Even though the weather was bad and we weren't able to go up to Matthew 25 and distribute food, I want to share with you that 28 people from this congregation signed up and said, I want to go help people who are in need. I think that's a holy moment. The other holy moment I want to share with you happened on Christmas Eve. We had a blood drive, and you might think Christmas Eve is an odd time to have a blood drive, but it's really not when you think about it. It's a beautiful time to give the gift of life to someone. The Red Cross had a goal that maybe we could get 13 pints of blood that day. We were able to collect 22 pints of blood, which is enough blood products to help 66 people. So that's wonderful. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, you are doing wonderful things in, through, and around this church. We are excited about our special needs ministry, confirmation, kids praise and grow, our music program, and grief group. But we aren't just caring for those inside our walls, we're caring for our local community too. Thank you for motivating us to help others through ministries such as The Gathering, which offers respite care, Spirit Rivers Matthew 25 food distribution, Meals on Wheels, and Family Promise for families experiencing homelessness. Please make us aware of you at all times that we may glorify you and do your work both within and outside our walls. In Jesus' name we pray. At this time I invite the ushers to collect the offering.
all the gifts we receive to do your work in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, please stay standing as we sing Hymn of Promise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 707 or on the... <laughs> be seated. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may you bless those who are hurting or ill and those with loved ones who are suffering. This is such a difficult time for so many. Teach us to notice when others are hurting or absent and give us the strength and courage to reach out to them. Help us make all people feel cherished as part of the body of Christ. Don't let us forget anyone. Guide us to step out of our comfort zone to welcome the loner, the stranger, the hurting, the lost. We thank you for bringing us together and for all you have done for us. Please join me as we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm Nancy Mahoald, one of the lay leaders here at church. I'm giving the message today to give Pastor Diana a much needed break. Um, it's good to see all of you here today. So is everybody ready for a new year? <laughs> I know I am. After a year of firsts since my husband Monty passed away 14 months ago, uh, I'm ready to turn the calendar to 2020. It's been a year of learning, a year of tears, a year of joy, a year of surprises, and a year of sadness. I've made new friends in our Good Grief group here at church. We share with each other, we cry with each other, we comfort each other, and most of all, we challenge each other. I don't think I would have come through this past year like I have without my friends in that group, my friends here in this congregation, and the staff all praying for me and supporting me, not to mention my wonderful kids and grandkids. We're all ready for a new beginning. I think our church is on the precipice, too, of a wonderful new year. We have some exciting new partnerships blossoming. We've entered into a new contract with Anoka County with The Gathering, which is respite care here at church. The program gives caregivers much needed time for themselves. 
I know firsthand what a blessing that can be. How many of you have served at Matthew 25? I heard a lot of people signed up. I'm so sad that we couldn't make it uh, with 28 people from this congregation. That's wonderful. Um, I want to read the scripture that this ministry is based on. It's Matthew 25, 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for, the, for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. So serving at Matthew 25 is such a rewarding experience. People from different churches and places of employment gathered together at Isanti Middle School at 8.55 a.m., the fourth Saturday of each month, and we're usually done by 11.30. <laughs> Food is delivered to the school from Hy-Vee, Trader Joe's, and Coburn's, and sometimes the Coburn staff stay to help. The minimal costs are mostly funded by the United Methodist Church in Cambridge, an aging church with lots of money, but not many able hands to help. We unload the truck and bring the food to designated stations. There are tables set up for meat, eggs, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, root vegetables, milk, cereals, a few canned goods, bread, and treats. The amounts vary each month, but the treat tables are by far the most popular, especially with the kids. We have cakes and cookies, donuts, pies, donut holes, shortcake, cheesecake, cupcakes in every flavor imaginable. This is where I've been stationed. We are the last table they come by, Sometimes we need to limit the amount of items that they can take, but most times we're encouraging them to take as much as they want because it's overflowing. We serve on average 100 people, depending on the month and depending on the Minnesota weather. What's wonderful about this program for me is that the people who come through are not part of any government program. They don't have to show ID to prove that they live in the county. They don't have to be interviewed or fill out endless forms. They are people who self-identify as a person or a family that needs a little help to make it through the month. As a matter of fact, many of the people who serve in this ministry are the very people who needed it, or still need it now. This is a no questions asked ministry, and it absolutely works. Now, I'm not able to unload the trucks, or run the boxes to the different stations, or even do the table takedown at the end. But I can sit or stand behind a table I'm stationed at, and greet everyone as they come by, interacting with children and adults alike. I personally know what it feels like to be the people we serve at Spirit River's Matthew 25 food distribution. When Monty and I first moved into our brand new home, a couple of blocks from here in 1970, Scott was three years old and Kirsten had just turned one four days before. Monty was a union man, a sheet metal worker. 
he installed heating and air conditioning in uh, commercial buildings. We had gone from paying $60 a month rent in our apartment to a $225 a month house payment. It was really tough those first few years. But not long after moving in, Monty was laid off. Construction was slow. We did everything we could. We accepted help from our folks. We did random jobs. We even cashed in our life insurance policies. But it just wasn't enough to get us through. I told Monty I was going to the county and applying for food stamps. He couldn't even look at me. He was, he was brought up that you do everything you can to take care of your family. But that didn't include going to the county or going to the state. He was humiliated by the very thought of it. When you're in the union, you're not in control. When you were laid off, your name went on a list, and it went to the bottom of the list. The person at the top of the list was the one called to go back to work. And if there were a couple of hundred workers on that list, it could be a mighty long time before you got back to work. If there were, um, it didn't matter how good of a worker you were, it didn't matter how dedicated you were, they called the name at the top of the list. So I went down and applied for food stamps. Someone from the county called me and told me we weren't eligible. I hung up the phone and started crying. I told Monty, how can we not be eligible? We have no income coming in and we have no money. So Monty called the county. He got mad. <laughs> he called the county and asked that very same question. How could we not be eligible? Long story short, someone had done the calculation incorrectly. Everything was done by hand back then. Remember those days when there was no computers? <laughs> so I went back and got our food stamps. Monty couldn't allow himself to go to the store to use them, but I could. We had two kids to feed. Today's food stamps are like a debit card, so nobody knows that you're using food stamps. Back then, well, they kind of looked like a check. You tore them out of a book. Each book was a different denomination. So it was, a, it was confusion. You got up to the cashier and you had to take out all these books and you tore a 20 out of one and you took a couple of fives out of another and a few ones out of another to pay her. Everybody in that line and everybody walking by you knew you were using food stamps. Now I lost my place. <laughs> it was embarrassing. It made me feel uncomfortable and self-conscious like it did everyone else using them. So I know how the people coming through Matthew 25 feel. I've been there. So now let me tell you my favorite story so far from Matthew 25. An elderly gentleman using a cane came walking through by himself. He wasn't part of a family unit. I said, good morning. How are you today? Ah, not so good. I said, well, I'm sorry. Well, maybe taking a treat home will help. Ah, I don't eat that stuff. As he walked by, I said, well, have a good day. <laughs> and about 15 minutes later, he came back. I changed my mind. <laughs> I said, well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you did. What can I help you find? So sometimes the way we relate to people is just as important, if not more important, than the tangible things that we give them. When I shared this story with Pastor Diana, she said, he probably came back for the smile and the conversation. And I hadn't thought about it that way. But that reminded me of another time years ago. There was a time when I didn't give anything tangible away and it made an impact. When Connor and Ari were first adopted into our family, Ari was ready to begin preschool at Head Start. Kirsten was working at the time, so she arranged for the kids to be taken care of at Eileen's daycare right across the street from me. So I'd go and pick Ari up and bring her to Head Start. You need to walk the kids in and check them in in their classroom. Well, I wasn't ready 
for what I saw. Most of the people bringing their kids there are hard living people, you know what I mean? Life and circumstances have been hard on them. I imagine some have drug or alcohol addictions, some are unemployed, some are single parents, and some are all of the above. Most of them looked so tired, haggard even. Some were still in their pajamas at 9 a.m. and walking their kids into school. Hard living people. I started praying for them. Then I asked God what I could do. He laid it on my heart to just smile. Well, that's easy enough, I thought. <laughs> so every morning I smiled, walking by, but most of the people were walking with their heads down, so they didn't even know that I was smiling at them. So I started saying good morning to each and every person that I walked by. That was maybe, you know, 12 to 24, each time I brought her in, each time I went to pick her up. Sometimes it was the same people, sometimes it was different people. Weeks went by. I said good morning to a young man one day. He looked up and he said, you talking to me? I said, yes, I am. I hope you're having a good morning. He kept walking and he looked back and he just looked at me like I was out of my mind. <laughs> slowly, very, very slowly, others looked up. A couple of people said, morning. By the time the school year was over, everyone, every person that I smiled at and said good morning to, at least smiled back. Some nodded to me, some said good morning, some actually struck up a conversation with me, and I went out to lunch a few times with the, one of the moms. So you see, we can make a difference just by sharing the simplest gesture. Almost everyone has a smile to give. Almost everyone can listen or show concern, care, and respect. Everyone can help give another person dignity, a smile, a good morning, how are you, and actually expecting an answer. Most of the marginalized are not used to having conversations with strangers. They are used to having to listen, but not being listened to. 1 Peter 4, 9 through 10 says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. The gifts that are mentioned in this scripture are the spiritual gifts that each of us have been given. Yes, each and every one of us, even you, has been given spiritual gifts. There are many different tests out there on the computer that you can take to determine what your spiritual gifts are. It's good to know what they are. When I took mine for the first time years ago, my top three gifts were faith, compassion, and encouragement. And as you mature in your faith, your top gifts can change because you're maturing. The last time I took it, my gifts were faith, teaching, and leadership. In the first Peter scripture that, that I read, we are being compelled to use the gifts we've been given to serve others. Are you exploring new possibilities? Are you looking for a way you can help? Sign up for Matthew 25 on January 25th. Let's see if we can get 30. <laughs> you may think this is not for you, but you might be surprised at what God does when we take risks and try new things for him. If you need a ride up there, just let me know. I picked Tammy up here at church, and I've got four more spots in my van. We've also begun working with Family Promise. This is an organization helping people who are homeless to find a way to stable employment or education, and ultimately to a new home. They have partnered us with Trinity Episcopal Church in Anoka. They have the building, but very few volunteers. We have the people, but can't house the families because of the many ways we already use our building during the week, including the ministry of our daycare. 
So we have volunteers go up to Trinity Episcopal or the Day Center and help serve a meal, play games or interact with guests, stay overnight or drive guests to the Day Center the next morning. When you volunteer, you are volunteering for one of these things, not all, and the commitment is for one week. But you can sign up for one night or all seven. It's up to you. Did you go on the prayer walk last Sunday or this morning? There are prayer points all over the church. The ministries are all listed at the door of the room where they meet. The music room, library, chapel, the multi-purpose room, and some of the daycare rooms are all places where ministry happens. When you find a prayer point, you stop and pray for all of the ministries and community groups that meet in that space. You'll be surprised at how many groups meet in this church. The prayer points will stay up. Feel free to take your own prayer walk or ask a friend to join you. And we're still working on and trying to expand what we are doing with the Sheridan story. Packing backpacks at Mississippi Elementary School on Fridays during the school year so the children have food over the weekend. A lot of the kids in that school get reduced or free lunches because of their family income. The food they receive at school might be the only food they eat that day. We also collect school supplies and some clothing for these same kids during the year. Did you make any resolutions for the new year? I did. I want to get out of the church and into the community more. I'm ready for a new year and new opportunities. I'm looking forward to starting that new Bible study next Sunday night on the book of James, which talks about the relationship between works and faith just what these new opportunities are for our church. So if you're interested in the Bible study, a little uh, commercial break here, <laughs> let me know or sign up in the hallway today so that I can order a book for you. 1 John 3, 16 through 18 reads, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. When I read this scripture, I thought about the fire at the old Drake Hotel in downtown Minneapolis, 250 plus low-income and homeless people were displaced on Christmas Day. Imagine being displaced when you're homeless. What little they did have was lost. Now agencies are scrambling to try to find shelter for all of them. Let us love with action and in truth. We have an entire community surrounding this church and surrounding your neighborhoods. Many need services that we may be able to provide already. All of our neighbors need our smiles and acknowledgement at the very least. All of our neighbors need our smiles. Are you ready to explore the possibilities? Are you ready to go out into the mission field? Let us pray. God of new beginnings, Help us recognize the possibilities you are offering us. Help us to surrender all of the things we hold on to that prevent us from just letting go and helping others. Put that urge in our hearts to get outside of our church walls. Reveal our future, God. There is so much work to be done. Let us be your hands and feet to come alongside our neighbors Help us to show your love through our actions. In Jesus' name we pray all things. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand for our closing song? Nancy said it as, at, we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. And it says, go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> but what she said is not just go use your words to tell it. Jesus Christ is born. He's here today. So, as the verse said, let us not love with words, but with actions and in truth. Go tell it on the mountain. Flocks back.
and holy God, you are responsible for every good thing that happens to us. Make us alive with your Holy Spirit. Help us share your good news through both our words and our actions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Sing it one more time.